I said hallelujah. Man, I'm excited about the word God has given me for today. I'm just glad to be here. This is a life changer. Um, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Shinar. Now, it's going to make sense in just a few minutes, but Shinar, hallelujah. Now, I'm going to talk today about tongues again. Now, some people have accused me about talking about speaking in tongues too much. Um, But when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Now, I'm going to say this. If you do not speak in tongues, start. If you, it's as simple as that. If you do not, start. But if you do, it's time to dig into some more pointed direction. It's time to begin to dig in with some more uh, 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 initiative with it. And, and I, I don't mean to be flippant by saying if you do not, start. I don't mean to be flippant by saying that. But there's something powerful about this. And I want you, the Bible says test the spirits to see whether they be of God or not. I want you to test if you've never ever drunk of these waters before and spoken in other tongues, I want you to give it six months to give it a shot. Try it out. Test it. And if after six months you come back to me and say, nothing is different in my life. I've been speaking in tongues every day for six months and absolutely nothing has changed and I just feel like I'm making it up. After six months of doing it every single day and pressing in with it, if you can come back to this house and say nothing's different, then I'll tell you stop doing it for you. But 100% of the time, over 15 years of ministry, hey, ooh, I have witnessed hundreds of people, not tens, not twenties, not thirties, hundreds of people that have tested it out, drunk of these waters, and then said, my life has never been better. My life has, I've never been stronger in my spirit. I've never had the kind of experiences that I've had since I've drunk of these waters. If you'll just test it. 600 million people globally can't be wrong. 600 million have attested to speaking in tongues at some point in their life. That's a lot of folks. Test it. Look at your neighbor and say, try it out. So you're going to try it out and, and just give it six months and give it a shot and see, don't it turn your world on its ear in a good way. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me and said, my people aren't building themselves up. They're not building and they're not resting. I want you to go around with the measuring stick of the word. This is what God spoke to me before I got to Winter Haven, Florida last week. Um, He said, I want you to take the word and, and use it as a measuring stick. He said, I want you to check the Covenant Network churches. And I said, for what? And I didn't know what he was going to say. He's going to say, we call, you call yourself spirit filled. But I want you to get the measuring stick of the word, hold it up to the people and ask the people, are you full of the Holy Ghost? And he said that so many of my people are discouraged and downtrodden and they they don't even feel like getting out of bed on a rainy day to go to church because they're not full of the Holy Ghost. They've not drunk of the water. They've not tasted of my goodness, says the Lord. He said, go around with a measuring stick of the word and ask the people, are you full of the Holy Ghost to overflowing? He told me that my people have become weak in their spirit because they've not stayed full. He said, you can tell the weak by offense. The easily offended is spiritually weak. The easily hurt is spiritually weak. It's not bad to be weak. Listen to me. It is not bad to be weak. It's not. It's bad to stay weak. Are you with me? Look at your neighbor and say, it's not bad to be weak, but it's bad to stay weak. 
He told me in my spirit. He said, so many of my children are weak in their spirit and they don't even know it, so I identify it. I said, God, when I identify it, people are going to get mad at me for saying they're weak in their spirit. He said, let them get mad. He said, let them get mad. Because if they get mad enough, they'll shift. When they get good and tired of being good and tired, they'll get strong. It's time to get strong in the Lord. It's time to quit letting the tsunami of the enemy knock us over. It's time to become a tsunami in the spirit where you yourself are like a tsunami. And people may say stuff to you, but you keep on trucking. You just boil right over it, boil right over it. You just keep going. It's not wrong to be weak. It's wrong to stay weak. It's time to get built up. When we know we're weak, we become accountable for our weakness. It's time to get strong. It's time to get your shoulders squared. And it's time to quit letting the little nimbly nimblies of life bring you down. I watched on Facebook on a regular basis every crisis, every turmoil, every trouble. Houses divided over gun control. One's mad at another because of guns. I'm sitting there going, what does this have to do with anything? This isn't kingdom. Whether the government lets us have guns or not is not something for us to sit and trouble ourselves over as much as we mind the kingdom stuff. People getting mad at each other, angry over things that have nothing to do with anything ultimately. People getting upset with each other in the house of God over doctrinal piddly things. <laughs> Getting upset over whether it's all right to speak in tongues or not. You can be a member of this church and not believe in speaking in tongues. That's absolutely fine. You can be a member of this church and not even believe in it. But you're going to hear it. And you're going to hear talking about it. But he says, my people, take the measuring stick of the word of God. How spirit-filled are we? I want my people to begin like never before to pray in the spirit. I want them to release the prayer language that I've given them in a pointed, directed way. I want my people to begin to encourage themselves, building my kingdom and supernaturally resting. This is the word of the Lord. So I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about this, about Shinar. Shinar, S-H-I-N-A-R, Shinar. Write that down if you're taking notes because we're going somewhere with this. Are you all ready? I sense the anointing of God on this. Genesis chapter 11. Let's go there and read real quick. Now, the, And I'm going to talk to you about reversing Babel. Reversing Babel. Before I go into this, keep that up there, Wes, if you will, for just a second. I'm a, I, I got to preach before I preach. I had a vision before going to Winter Haven, and the Lord showed me a bunch of wells. Y'all know what a well is? W-E-L-L, -L, you know, where you get your water. And he said, my children are a bunch of wells. And they're sitting there, and they're saved, and they, they themselves have the living water inside of them. But they're not letting the rivers flow. And I saw in this vision these wells begin to churn and shake like an earthquake was under them. And I saw the wells go, whoosh, whoosh. And you could hear the water and you could see little spots of water coming up out of the well. And I was like, what's going on? And the Lord showed me these wells begin to shake until water come up and out and begin to flow out over the top of those wells. He said, I'm releasing an anointing in this next season that the wells are going to be shaken. Not 
not through the trials that we would normally think of, but my people are going to learn the power of releasing the rivers of living water out of those wells like never before. Hallelujah. Don't just sit in the well. Release the river. All right, so we're going to go into Shinar a little bit today. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city. And here it is, with a tower that reaches to the heavens. Now, that, yeah, it's interesting. This isn't talking about skyscrapers. We'll talk about that in just a second, because you'll see what God says, and this is interesting. So that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this. Read this out loud together with me. Ready, read. Then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Now, let's, I'm going to start back up at that verse 6 again. I'm gonna, I just want to stay there. And beginning at the quotation marks, look at your neighbor and say, this is God talking. Ready? Read it with me. If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Verse 7. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Now, I want to say in the Word of God, there are two places God touched language. Number one was here, and number two was on the day of Pentecost. And if you have Acts chapter 2, let's read that together, and then we're going to go back to Genesis. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what appeared to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now all in Babel... God come down and confuse their language so that they could not build. On the day of Pentecost, God came down and united a language so that we could build. Hallelujah. On the old, if they, and I'll say this, this was fallen people. Let me just go back. I'm all, sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm excited about this message. But in verse 1, let's go back to Genesis 11, verse 1. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. Now, it's not just one language, but a common speech. Now, I've been to Australia. <laughs> I've been to England. And, you know, they speak the same language I speak. But if I heard it once, I heard it a hundred times in the times that I've been in other English-speaking countries, sometimes in parts of this country. They said, pardon? And I didn't understand the first few times they said, pardon, because it sounded different. I didn't understand what they were saying. So I went, huh? They didn't understand my guttural, huh? So they went, pardon? So we stood there in a loop of language trying to figure out. I went to a coffee shop, and, and the first time I went to a coffee shop in Australia, I said, I need a cup of coffee. And they went, what kind? I have no idea what you're asking me. They're like, you want a tall white or a flat blood or something? And I'm like, I don't know what that means. I just want some drip coffee. And they looked at me like this. We don't serve drip coffee. <laughs> and I'm like, what does that mean? It's a whole other language. It's a whole other. I was standing there and we were confused and we couldn't build a cup of coffee together. And then they finished the coffee and they went, take away. And I went, what? 
They said, take away. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they said, take away. I went, you're saying to go. <laughs> yes, this is to go. <laughs> Sometimes you can have a common language and not a common speech. But here he was saying they had both a common language and a common speech. So their dialect was the same. Verse 4, look what was happening in verse 4. Let's jump down there really quick. Then they said, come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. So they had a common language and a common speech. So they started building something. Their vision was to build something that would access the glory realm. Now it says the heavens, but you have to understand their concept was vertical. God's concept was spiritual. So they started building something, and they were attempting to access this glory realm, but they were trying to do it illegally. And listen to me, this is so important. If they access the glory realm in their fallen nature, when they touched the glory, they would have went, we learn about this throughout the book of Exodus, that anybody who gets into the glory realm that's not covered by the blood accesses it illegally. The high priest, and we have this, and when I come back to the tabernacle pretty soon, we're going to talk about how he had to have a rope tied around his ankle so that if he went into the glory realm with sin in his life, they had to drag him out because he would be struck down. God's glory and sinful flesh cannot abide in the same place at the same time. Now, here we learn that they were trying to access it illegally. In verse 6, look at that. God is saying they could do it. Now, we learn about this in Exodus because God tells them to build a tabernacle. And in that tabernacle, he builds a facility that his glory can come, but it's hidden and it's accessed by the blood. Here they were trying to do it illegally too early. They were trying to do something they were not prepared to do. And God knew that if they accomplished, and they were going to, accomplish what was inappropriate, it would have blew them up. So God came down and in his great mercy... He confused their language. In verse 7, he shifted their language. Now, I want to say this today. They were building something to access the glory realm. Look at your neighbor and say, they were building something. Now, where were they building this? In the valley of Shinar. Now, I ain't going to preach much longer after this point. Because when I get done, you better be ready to receive. So put up the Hebrew letters for Shinar. First of all, I want to say this about Shinar. I was in Winter Haven, and while I was in the hotel room, I, I had already prepared the message for the next day. And the Lord said, I want you to go to Genesis 11. I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. And I said, what? He said, go to Genesis 11. I'll show you. So I went to Genesis 11. And I opened it up, and he said, in the valley of Shinar, they began to build something. In the valley of Shinar, they began to build something. In the valley of Shinar, they began to build something. Look at your neighbor and say, in the valley of Shinar, they begin to build something. So I said, Lord, what does this mean? He said, I want you to look up the Hebrew word for Shinar. And I want you to see what I promised. The first time I touched their language, I deposited into that valley a promise that there would come a day that I would unite their language once again. Here we see the Hebrew word for Shinar. In this word, we see the letter Shin. Shin <laughs> is the Hebrew letter that means flames of fire. It looks like it. You see the little flicks of fire on the top of it. I is the next letter. It jumps this one. And this is the letter Ian. So it's Shinar. So the next letter is the Ian. 
which means eyes. Now here in this letter, you should see two eyes and, and like the nerve endings connected to the brain. The brain would probably go right here. So they say that in this letter is deposited sight, that you see something. So everybody say, I in is sight. Nun is the Hebrew letter that represents prayer and humility. It's the bowed head. So this is the stature of prayer. Do y'all see the person there with their bowed head? You see that? That's, that's what that represents. Here's their feet. They're standing with a bowed head in prayer. And then resh is the last letter. And this represents a head. Do you see the Elvis pompadour? It's like a hairstyle, just, you know, a mullet. So, so. so in the valley of Shinar, God said, there's coming a day where fire will be seen on the heads of the praying people. Fire will be seen on the heads of the praying people. When he confused their language, I'm sure the, the people at that time were looking and going, why is, why, what, what does Shinar have to do with anything? And four, six, eight, ten thousand years ago, however long ago it was, they had no understanding that there was coming a day that even though their language got confused, that God said the source of a language will come on the day of Pentecost and fire, it will be preceded by fire being seen on the heads of the praying people. And when you see this sign and you see fire on the heads, I'm going to unite the tongues once again. Shinar, literally translated from the Hebrew, means rivers. So they're standing in this valley of rivers. And God is saying, in this valley of rivers, where there's a fire that's promised to be seen upon the heads of praying people, I will, in time, unite their language once again. So we look back to the valley of Shinar and we see that they were building a temple illegally, a place to access the glory. But God says to us today, the Holy Spirit can unite your tongues. You may not speak the same language because there's diversities of tongues. You may not speak the same when you pray in tongues, but the source is the same. And when you have one source, you have a common language and a common dialect. How many of y'all know that the Father understands the Holy Ghost? When these people were building in the valley of Shinar, they had to talk to each other. When we're building in the valley of Shinar and praying in the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost talks to God the Father in language that we don't understand with our own natural mind, but we don't build with mortar and tar and bricks. We build with the things of the Spirit. Glory to God. So when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, we begin to exchange in the Spirit with the Spirit something that begins to manifest in the Spirit above us like a place that accesses a portal of glory. You may sit there and say, well, I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Pray in the valley of Shinar. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and you'll begin to understand what I'm saying. If you want to see the kingdom of God built in Atlanta, right here in this place, if you want to see thousands come to know Jesus, it's time to build a tabernacle in the Spirit that accesses the glory realm. We need to be united in our tongues. We need to pray in the Spirit. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, you need to hop up. Why are you doing I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm building something. Some of you sitting here today, you've never received your prayer language. You're about to, if you want to. We're not going to put something on you you don't want. We can't do that. But I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me this past week and said so many of my children aren't accessing this. This is why the part of their tower ain't being built. This is why if you look in the kingdom he said, I gave them on the day of Pentecost this precious gift. And if you have questions, there's so many questions that I sense in my spirit that so many of you might have. But every believer, according to Mark 16, 
and according to Acts 2, and according to Acts 19, and according to Acts 10, can pray in the Spirit. You may not have the gift of the message in tongues and interpretation, but you got a prayer language. All you got to do is release it. And God says to us today, if you'll begin to release this precious flow, He reaches out to us and He begs us, He pleads with us, He pulls upon us. He says, if you'll begin to release it with a pointed tongue, if you begin to point the tongue and begin to say, Kila Mashoto Rabosaya, and you begin to do it with boldness and you begin to do it with authority and you don't just ramble and you don't just kind of do it as a half-hearted event, but you put your heart behind it. The Lord says that you'll begin to see something built in the glory that the world has never seen before. Hallelujah. Now I said, Lord, what is this about rambling in tongues? Some of y'all get what I'm about to say. He showed me a vision. And he, he took me into a lot of visions this past week, and he was showing me things. And he showed me this, this woman who was a real estate agent. And she said, she's walking through the house. And she's like, that's a sink. That's a room. There's the stairs. He asked me, he said, with her rambling, how quickly do you think she's going to get to the contract? And I said, not very quickly. He said, so many of my children don't put their heart into their prayer language because their minds don't understand it. When they begin to pray in tongues or speak in tongues, they're doing it half-heartedly. They're just kind of walking around the spirit realm going, here's a chair. There's the stairs. They've begun to take it for granted. They've begun to do it as a, as, a, as a lifeboat. They've begun to do it as something that's not a major component of their life. He said, if you ever try to build a building and you just kind of throw a brick down, a building will never be built if you just keep throwing bricks. He said, you've got to direct your attention. You've got to direct your heart. And when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, and listen, some of you, you got to compare spiritual things to spiritual this morning. Because I know there's folks in this room who's never received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking another tongue. But if you'll begin to access that dimension and you begin to get a hold of it, you'll understand because you'll, you'll compare spiritual things with spiritual. And so when I get together with Mary and we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost... We begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We begin to build something in the Spirit. And I get together with Evangelist Tammy. We begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. We begin to build something in the Spirit. The Lord told me that this day and age, the mega is taking the place of the spiritual. He said they're building big buildings, but it's not in the Spirit. They're building big auditoriums, but it's not in the Spirit. So they're taking their language the prayer language, the united language, and they're putting it in a back room, and they're not doing it corporately. So nothing in the Spirit is taking place over the city and over the country because they're putting it in a back room, and they're not building anything together. But if my people will come back to the valley of Shinar and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with an unknown tongue, then I'll begin to build something in the Spirit that will surpass any and all mega buildings. I don't want just a big building to house a lot of people. Oh, go ahead and say, Michael, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, bo ho, ho, bo ho, hey, hey, oh. We talk about the bad of it. We come back to the, to the valley and we, we talk about the Tower of Babel. And people talk about the bad of it. But I'm saying to you today, there's things happening in the Spirit right now. My microphone went dead. The lights are dimming. There's things happening. The world calls it a haunted house. I call it a Holy Ghost house. We got a good, good spirit, and he's the Holy Ghost. (laughs) 
Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Really quick. First. <sighs> Anyone who speaks in the tongue edifies himself. Now, the second part of that talks about prophecy edifying the church. But God said, edify, edify, edify. We get our English word edifice from that. The Greek word is oikotomeo, oikos. Oikos is the Greek word for house. Oikotomeo is to build a big house. So he that prays in an unknown tongue builds a big house inside of himself. That's what it literally says. I got a big, big house that I'm building. What are you building? I'm building that, that temple. I'm, I'm making room. When God comes into me when I'm born again and I'm saved, I got a house. But I want to build on some rooms. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm building out the house. I'm adding rooms. Well, do you feel anything? Not all the time. But I begin to speak. Now, I know Stephen Carnes, and I love him. So my house and his house, we can build adjoining rooms in the Spirit. What are y'all doing? We're, built, we're joining our house. My big, big house and his big, big house gets to be a really, 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 really big house. We begin to join with others. And our houses begin to unite. Levites, y'all need to spend five minutes every week just praying in tongues when y'all come together. Before y'all pray and you understand. Leaders, I done told at the leadership meetings when we come together, we're spending the first 15 minutes praying in the Spirit. Why? We build not the house. Glory to God. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Something's happening. Something's happening. Now look at Jude 20 real quick while you're standing up. But you dear friends... Build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 and 12 talks about praying in the Spirit, being praying in tongues. These two things are adjacent to one another. Oh, please hear this today. In Jude, he said, Oi katameo, praying in the Holy Ghost. You've been living in shacks. Absolutely Fabulous was a television show in the 80s or 90s. I don't remember that. I didn't see the episode. I'll watch that show. But Pastor Johnny was laughing, and I went in there and said, What you laughing at? And he said, What were their names? Critter and what? Adina and Patsy. They spent a weekend in this nice house. They had a really nice experience. But they were leaving, and these people kept coming to them and speaking in French, and they didn't understand it. They kept saying, blah, 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 blah. and they're like, oh, that's fine, that's fine. And they kept giving them money and shooing them away. Here's my money, go away. They found out at the end of the weekend that these people that were speaking in a language they didn't understand was telling them. You're in the guest house. The big house is up there. And if you'll just get out of the guest house, this, you're in the servants' quarters. If you'll just go up there, the weekend that you've paid for is up there, not down here. Boy, that's the gayest reference of a Holy Ghost filled meeting I've ever put into each other. Absolutely fabulous. But let me tell you something. Some of you as believers have been living in the guest house. You've been living beneath your ability. God has placed within every believer a well at salvation. Now all you got to do is churn that well and begin to release those rivers. And as you do, you're going to get out of the shacks and you're going to make your way to the big, big house. I'm going to close this service in just a moment. But this morning, before I have anybody to come up and minister in, in prayer, the prayer team, 
If you don't have the baptism in the Holy Ghost or you have the baptism. See, because this is something else ministers and people have talked about for years. Some people receive the baptism and speak in other tongues one time and that's it forever. It's meant to be a daily river that we can drink. It's meant to be daily that we can flow in. If you've been baptized filled with the Holy Ghost, but you haven't accessed this dimension in years, or if you've never received, I'm going to open this altar to you right now. You can go ahead and come on if you want to receive more. If you've not been praying in the Holy Ghost, and you want a fresh filling of the baptism, and you want a fresh river to flow, come on. If you've, been ba- if you've never received, come on. If that's either one of y'all, come on. Don't wait. Come on right now. I want to be clear with this. If you've never received or if you've received and not flowed in it in a while, come on. Anybody? I'm going to give you 30 seconds and then we're going to move on because we got something else to do. Come on. If that's you, come on. Is there anybody else? Anybody? Come on. Ten more seconds. Come on. Yeah, come on. That's good. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time. When I was in Winter Haven, there were two people that had never received and never flowed in it. And they came forward and received instantly. And, and I knew that as I go around and preach this, most of the believers will be spirit-filled. But we're pointing towards something else in just a moment. But right now, I want y'all to receive. So I want everybody to lift your hands and believe. I'm going to lay my hands on you. And when I do, you're going to sense a bubbling inside of your spirit. All you have to do, and you may not even feel it, you'll just sense it. And there's a difference between feeling and sensing. Okay? When I do, and I lay hands on you, just begin to let those rivers flow. Just begin to speak them. You'll get a few syllables. Even if if you just...
Pastor Joe. Hold on one second. Baby. I want you to take these, and I want you to take them, um, maybe not in the living room, but I want you to find a place. Can they get in the Sunday school room? I want them to go to the Sunday school room, and I want you to give them a tutorial on the release of prayer language, okay, and the baptism. And if, as they're walking out, as they're going, if anybody wants to go with them to receive, because they're going to receive. Some of them got a little bit, but they're going to get the whole flow before they leave this place today. In Jesus' name. We're going to close this service with this. How many of y'all ready to build? How many of y'all ready to return to the Valley of Shinar? Come to this altar right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to spend five minutes of praying in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and dim the backlights. The Lord was already trying to do that earlier. Five minutes. Three to five minutes we're going to spend. <laughs> Derek said 20. Please hear this. If you don't have, if you were nervous to come up and you don't have a free flow of the baptism and you were nervous to come up in front of everybody and you're up here now, now's the time to let that flow jump on you. Now's the time. Y'all, we're, we're in the Valley of Shinar. God, I've been reading articles recently about all these people that are leaving churches all over the world in multitudes. They're linking it to the discouragement of social media. That people have begun to discourage each other. Why aren't you at church? We've been missing you. People say, oh, I just don't feel it. People are like, well, I don't, you know, people upset me or... Or I was hurt. And because of social media, people have begun to get more information. So they've begun to isolate themselves from the assembly of the household of God. Statuses need to be replaced with prayer language. We need to begin to pray in the Spirit. And we need to fill our statuses with, I can't wait to see you. And bowl over like a tsunami over all this stuff that the enemy tries globally. I'm, this isn't a new covenant problem. This is a global issue. Social media has begun to discourage people from religion. We just went through it. Everybody in this room knows a name, if you're on Facebook, of someone who refused a marriage license. So the world has provided an opportunity for the world to begin to hate Christians. And it's because we are not speaking one language and one dialect. You've seen it. We've all seen it. But huh, my jaw, <laughs> I just felt like I got slapped across the face in a good way. I just, I feel drunk in my spirit. We've seen the world beginning to deconstruct the church. We've even seen Christians Throwing rocks at people trying to build. But He's uniting our tongue. Oh. If you'll just lift your hands right now. Spend, let's spend three minutes praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, no, <laughs> build, 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 oi caramels, build.
60 seconds. 60. Point. Point that prayer language. Point it. Point it at building. All those that have wandered away, we build. All those that have backslidden, we point our prayer language toward you. And we say, build the kingdom. Those that are on drugs of this city, look this way, those that are on drugs. There's a facility being built in the spirit. You're being drawn. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Lord, you unite our language. Although we were all speaking different tongues, the Holy Ghost is our source, the one who gives us the utterance. Therefore, we speak God language. We speak God language. We just declare things in the Spirit that go past our understanding, that in our minds we don't know how to access and reach those things that are beyond our grasp. But in the Holy Ghost, we can shine our, we can reach past the visible and touch the intangible. We can reach past what we know with our minds and touch what is unknown. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we can pray in an unknown tongue and declare a harvest like this world has never seen. We can pray over our children in an unknown tongue and release a future that we don't even know about but that's part of God's plans and purposes for them. We can rescue our children out of the future of drugs and alcohol because the prayer language builds walls around them that we can't do with the natural, but you can do with the spiritual. Lord, when we reach that invisible place, and we begin to build in the Spirit with the prayer language. We begin to build protection around your people. Offense falls off because it hits a wall that can't reach the people. Heartache falls off. It avoids dating disasters. For those that are single, distractions that go into decades prayer language averts those we stay the course Father we remain a spirit filled people and we say today we trust the utterance we trust the word of God We trust the word. We trust the flow. Lord, when our minds can't understand, we can build past our minds. We reach into that place. Jesus' name. For years, I've spent, please hear this New Covenant Church of Atlanta. I've had people come in and say to me, tongues makes me uncomfortable. It seems too radical. After one time hearing it, I was like, whatever. Two times hearing it, I was like, eh, whatever. 
50 times hearing it, 100 times, ever how many times I've heard it, it began to affect me in my soul. And I began to get afraid that we would lose people. And I didn't do it consciously. I wasn't aware of it. It was subconscious. So I began to back away from some of this more radical stuff. To you, my church family, I repent. You're about to see a running pastor. A tongue-talking, Bible-believing. Oh, just all over the place. We running. Tongue-talking, Bible-believing, miracle-working, signs and wonders, leadership. Because then what begins to happen is the enemy comes in and begins to whisper these things and begins to distract with things. And all of a sudden you find yourself soaked and immersed in things that aren't immersed. But I've come up higher. Let's do some radical stuff for the kingdom. Let's not care about what people think. Let's not care about their faces. Let's not care about that. Let's, I mean, we love folks, we love people, and we'll do our best to help answer any questions. But it's time to do some radical stuff. It's time to move on in the things of God. I'm going to dismiss y'all. But with one confession, everybody say this after me. I am a Bible token, scripture quote, devil chasing, sin defacing, tongue talking, Bible believing, believer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. When somebody comes to you with something, I think it's time when people start saying, well, you know what? Somebody upset me at the church. And just let those rivers begin to flow. Because this is what we need to say to people. If somebody upset them, somebody did something, something happened, if they don't like something, say, my mind can't answer your question. But my spirit can. Begin to release that utterance. Amen? Amen. All right. Altar ministry workers are going to be up here. They're going to be facing the congregation. Each person that needs prayer, don't leave this place without prayer if you need it. If you don't, you are dismissed. Hug each other. Love each other. Say, this is the well. This is the river. This is the river. Hug each other. Love each other. And you are dismissed.